Hey, welcome to episode 308. And I just wanted to tell you about the commercials. So this podcast is brought to you as always by Elementor, my favorite way to build websites. It's a plugin. It's a visual builder. It works with almost any WordPress theme and it makes it invincible. I've been able to do so many sites and very quickly, it's really sped up my process. If you want to try it out, you do have to do a capital D and a capital R and then Elementor, E-L-E. M-E-N-T-O-R, and that's bit.ly, B-I-T dot L-Y slash capital D, capital R, Elementor, okay? Um, and there's something new, a new ad today. We have Timely. I don't know if you guys use this. My friend Karina turned me on to it, and I love it. It is a time tracker, and I use it on my computer. It it's also tracks time on my phone. It gives me warnings if I've been sitting too long. It's asked me if my chair is comfortable, but the thing I like about it the best is this memory option. It also remembers what I've been doing. So if I haven't been able to bill and I that day or that week, then I can go back I, to the, the timely calendar and it gives you, here's what you were looking. It tells me what websites I was looking at, what um, projects I was looking on. It doesn't send that to anybody. It's just for me. So timely for individuals, there's an individuals and then for teams. And if you pay yearly, you save 10%. And if you use my link, you'll save 10%. So I don't know if that means you'll save 20%, but that would be freaking awesome. If you visit timely, through this link, you're going to receive a 10% discount once you activate your subscription. You get a 14-day free trial. Then you can see if Timely is the right fit for you. And the link is bit.ly, B-I-T dot L-Y slash all lowercase D-R Timely, T-I-M-E-L-Y. And of course, it is always brought to you by Audible. And I am reading Twyla Tharp, The Creative Habit. And I'm doing this with a friend of mine. We are reading and I'm four hours and eight minutes left. I'm on chapter seven. I should be able to finish that by next week. So hopefully I can tell you a little bit about it. She's a dancer. It's really cool. And you know, on Audible, you can take notes. You can support the show by going to Audible and you can get a free book, audit, free free. 30 day free trial and you get one audiobook for free and that's the book I'm reading right now. You can download it at www.audibletrial.com/designrecharge. And the other last way is of course Patreon and it is always brought to you by patrons. We are going to start a August challenge very soon. So if you are ready to do a challenge with a few other people that will hopefully inspire you, keep you accountable, and then really light the fire underneath you. This new challenge is going to be really fun. I hope you'll join us and you can, you know, support the show for even a dollar um, a month, I think is terrific. So $1, $5, $19, dollars I think is the next one. $19, you get courses and you get a little bit more meaty content. Patreon.com slash Diane Gibbs. Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Design Recharge. I'm your host, Diane Gibbs, and I'm excited to have Andre Kitano. Mm, I even Kitano. just practiced. Kitano. K, yes. I like a C A Y, but it is C A E. Anyway, yeah. Andre and I have been friends on the internet for, I don't know, years. And so he's yes, come to Design years. Recharge a long time. Yeah. And he is incredible. I cannot wait to feature him today. He has such a passion for um, and for illustration, has a passion for other building other illustrators up as well. And he's making a living with the, a living with his illustration. And I think sometimes it's really difficult for us to to find our niche, and then it's really hard sometimes for us to make money at that. So I I love that you're you're able to do both. So. I'm super excited to have you yes. on the show. Well, thank you so much for having me. It's an honor to be here. It's, I, I've been a fan of, of the show for a long time, and it's, it's incredible to be one of the guests. So thank you. I'm super happy to have you. All right, we're going to jump right in, and then okay. you're going to share your screen whenever you want to, or he okay. has a short cord, so he might have to pull his earbud out and show us. But he's... Yeah. Mm, I don't even want to, we're just going to jump in. All right. So okay. how long have you been working as a full-time illustrator and designer? Right. Since 2008, 
uh, after I finished the, my university in 2006, I had a, a one-year scholarship with a friend in an institute of technology here in Coimbra, Portugal. And I did posters, logos, um, and the coolest project I did a, a game. We did a game, export the uh, floors of different floors of the forest. But in 3D, I had to animate and model it 3D. I did not want to do that again. <laughs> that wasn't so, ideal. No, no. But during that time, I met a writer and I met the publisher in Coimbra and I started working as uh, both illustrating and designing books, uh, doing covers, book pagination. It's, I learned a lot about doing books in that time. But just kind of on the side? No, just a full-time thing. Okay. I, I had enough work from the publisher to, to do only that. But you were working as a contractor for the publisher or you were full-time no, working? freelancer. Okay. <clears throat> so Jeremy would say he doesn't like that word because you have a business, right? So, so he yeah. would say, it's... yeah. Anyway, I don't know if you were there on that show, but he's an illustrator. You usually always come for the illustrator. So, um, so then, so 11 years you've been run, running a business and being a illustrator. And so sometimes we have to take jobs that aren't necessarily all illustration, but you've been able to really focus. Um, I want to ask you about how you met that, how you meet authors, how you meet publishers, because that's one of your strong suits. Um, yeah. But we'll get to that because we have okay. when people do that. I don't know why I did that. I hate when people do that because I'm like, just tell me now. Um, I can but, tell you. <laughs> all right, tell me. Just go ahead. Tell uh, me. How well, did you meet the? How do you meet these people? Well, uh, I don't want to mess up the order, but uh, I don't care. Mess uh, it up. First, the first writers and publishers I met was actually because of my mother. She's uh, also a teacher. She worked as a librarian teacher for many years, and she was all, always meeting writers, publishers. So. About in 2005, I met a, a, a writer called Lourdes Breda. Um, she's a very small. She's about the, the as, as much tall as the table. She only has one arm. But she has written 20 books, organized events. She's a, her, her handicaps does not, does not stop her. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no. Um, and the publishers was also because of my mother. She she was buying books from the bookstore, and she mentioned that I finished the, the course, and I had a portfolio. So I went there and I I talked to the guy, and he gave me a chance for a first book. So that's how it happened. Uh, initially, thanks to my mother. Okay, so but we all can't have your mom as our mom. Yeah, so, of course. So if we're uh, refiguring how we could use this, we could mm -hmm. say that we could. Um, we could be friends with a librarian or be friends with teachers, right? Yeah. This yeah. One, one other, otherwise, uh, uh, for example, I, I was buying books from a comic book store and I met the guys and luckily for me, the guys did the critique about comics. They were inside the industry. So that helped me. They, they brought authors to the, to the shop. So if you want to do comics, of course, I would say a comic book shop is a great place to, to be, to make contacts, to be friends with the guys, you know, that run the shop. Because if you are friends with them, they, maybe they give you a chance or present you to the, to the authors that go there. Because I was always buying books, but showing my work as long as, because this was during the time I was in, in university. So I was always showing work. I went to the uh, biggest festival in Portugal. I met the authors. And back, back then, I, I always tried to have the book for the author to sign. So it was, she could, he could recognize, I, I like this work, I bought the book, I like the, what he does. And then in the end, I would ask, oh, I, I have a portfolio, would you mind that I show to you? Can you give me a critique? And that always worked for me in every festival I, I went. So, so that, that is really hard for a lot of people. Is that, are you an extrovert all, uh, coming out of the box? You no, no, I, I was... Until university, I was a very, very shy uh, guy because uh, nowadays you would call it bullied and I was not extrovert. I, I could not talk in, in front of people. It's really hard for me. But 
with the books, with present, the presentations, uh, talking in schools, you can be shy and quiet in front of, I don't know, 20 young kids. They will eat you alive if you do that. So you, you need to, to improve that. But, but showing the work, I, I have a theory that if you have portfolio in, in, in the comic book event, there's editors. Editors are, are there to see work, yeah. hopefully. Uh, and and you, you, you show the work, you show the portfolio, you let them see the pages. If they have questions, they will ask you. So you don't have, you, don't really, you really don't have to make conversations. Uh, but just even asking them to yeah. look and give you feedback is really hard for a lot of people. So was there anything like the first time? I don't know, because you've done it. You did it over and over and over. It got easier, right? Yeah. And you got feedback, but you were willing to show the comic book owner. You were willing. Yeah comic book store owner, mm -hmm. but you were also, you were also a patron. So he wants to value you or she wants to, they, they see value because you're a returning customer and, yes. and right. And so then you start a relationship, but then mm -hmm. you also say, Hey, I do this. And because your work is so strong, which we probably should show, show some of your work so that people know when we're not just right. making stuff up. Uh, <laughs> Yes. Uh, do you want me to show some of the yeah, my work? Show, yeah. Show us okay. a book. Show us one of the books. So uh, this was, uh, it's not comics, but it, I started doing p uh, picture books. So this is called Boba John or the Abbot John in English. And, and, uh, and this is history based, right? So history, how, did, yes. how did you get this job? It was because of the Luz Vreda, the writer I was talking about. This was the, the first book I did with her. So it's my second illustrated book. I, I was learning along the way, of course. Uh, and uh, actually, there's a, a CD in the back of the book. Oh, wow. It tells the story of... Because uh, it is, this is a tale about Montmorvel, which is a castle near where I live. Uh, it's a tale about the abbot and the miracle that happens. Um, and so we, we, have a, we had a, a preoccupation about telling the story and we had a, a CD. And... Funny enough, my father is narrate is the narrator of one of the uh, texts here. Oh, cool! Uh, show us some of the inside spreads, yeah. So, and, and tell us about how you work. Like, what's your process like? Well, in this case, I started digitally uh, with the uh, Photoshop and into a tablet. But I found out really fast it was a bad bad idea. Why? Digitally, I could change from red to blue to green over and over and over, and I would stay in this loop forever. So I decided, no, I will do this uh, in paper. I will draw, draw with pencil, I will ink with the brush, and I will watercolor in the same paper. So if it goes wrong, I have to do it again. So I would not try to mess up <laughs> because of that, because I had to redo all the things. So I was working two or three pieces at the same time. So it, it was a nice lesson about how digital can have a bad side because you can really okay you can edit any any time but that's a bad thing because you can always mm -hmm. oh I did this line is not does not come out good let me try again let me try again let me try again and you can stay over and over in this so, cycle so maybe not great for perfectionists you have to be able to kind of separate yourself out so Taylor has a question okay. did you Paid well for that first book. I think this was his second book, but did you get paid well and or did you work your way up? The only authors I seem to meet have a shoestring budget and she'll be on sometime soon, but I well, don't remember when. Well, um, for my first book, um, maybe not because I did not knew any other freelancers or illustrators, uh, but I did the design for the book in the end. And that's a good thing about my degrees in uh, communication design, which is graphing and multimedia design. And that's a good thing because um, I could also be paid for the design. In this case, the publisher let me do that. And, you know, but in, in this case, I, it was another designer and I had to, you know, try to talk with her to um, tell her how I would, how would how would like or not because she was not a designer she was a journalist she learned in design it was a big mess you know uh, uh, because for example in this book and uh, in this book I also did a design and I could do a really cool thing which is it's called the black the shy black bird mm. and I, if I was wasn't a designer I could not do that this because it's it's a shy bird so it's in the back cover oh I love that it. yeah. Um, if you read the story, it's related, but 
you know, you can use so much of the book itself to tell the story. It's not just the graphics. You can also surround it, the, the book itself to tell Fine. the story, you know, because in the story he, he runs away, he gets, he only sings at night. So he's, he's uh, hidden in the back cover, you know. And also this is the thing that my uh, graphic design degree helped me because I had to think about the concept. How can I translate it into visual? How can I translate it in the graphic form? And in, in other way, I, I, if I wasn't a designer, maybe I could not do this, you know. So they're saying it's very clever. Oh my gosh, I love that. Oh, That's you. awesome. So they, so yeah. it is. So this is the inside of that book. Is that a picture book or just a story? Yes, it's um, um, a, a picture book. Okay, cool. That you and did the with, inside. Yes, there's a lot of different. Uh, Pagination. Let me just try to find it here. Like this. Oh yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. Wow. Look at those birds. So this is uh, just India ink and and brush. Uh, so yeah, uh, I I I did that a lot of books about. Um, You're like books. it's it's just India ink and yes, brush. Just, I'm yes, like oh just, my gosh, yeah. it is. Oh my. Just. <laughs> Just let me try to find this here. Then I did a book, and this was another tip that I, I can give you. It's be friend with your teachers because they would, they can get you, they can give you opportunities as well. Because my teacher uh, worked in this uh, publisher, which is one of the biggest publishers in, in Portugal. So is this and on paper also? The colors are digital, but okay. the lines are with. Yes, I discovered the brush and ink in two thousand and eight, and. I find my medium. It's what I enjoy, it's what I love. And um, so he gave me this project. In this case, he did the design, the graphic design for the book. Uh, it's from a collection, so every covers are well, more or less the same. And um, it's about a writer that lost his words, the lost the ability to write. Sorry, I'm picking back up. <laughs> no, it's okay, yeah. Um, so this book has a, uh, had a great challenge, which was, um, how can I show that he lost the words? How can I show that he's not a writer anymore? If you think about that, how can you do? Can, how can you show that visually? You know, it's not it's not an easy problem to solve, and I mm -mm. I struggle with that. But then I I, I brought I brought a, a typewriter machine here, and I was looking at that, and I and I saw the letters, the letters, and okay, letters make words, word make. Sentences, sentences make a story. If it doesn't have letters, he cannot write. He can be a writer, uh -huh. you know. So, in this, in the book, I have the oh, the, the letters spread out. Yeah, the keys. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Um. So, he's lost. He doesn't have a, a keys. He doesn't have the. Oh, that's what's on those weird yes. trees. Yes, it's, the, it's, the, it's the, the letters. Yes, because someone started typing bad words, so. This is a, a metaphor for, you know, words wow. that hurt, that make you feel bad because they have the spines and, and all that. Man, that's awesome. So people can yeah. hire you, right? Like yes. you're available <laughs> for hire. I'm available, yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so, yeah, then, in, that, in that case, I think that the graphic design really helped me because. The illustration, of course, it's more artistic, but it's a visual problem anyway. You have a story, you have to tell it, you have to hopefully think about what is the best medium, way to draw, because, I don't know, if you want to draw something fragile, you want, maybe you want to draw it with a really bold line. You can use a really thin pen and maybe the line interrupts, because it already will give you that message. It's a fragile thing, mm -hmm. you know, in that case, all of this graphic design helped me uh, do that. And of course, comp in composition and, you know, for example, he's lost here. Oh, so I did it really, beautiful. really small, but the clouds point to him, even you mm -hmm. don't see it at first. So you can use a lot of tricks to, Psychology. Know, to leave, yeah, to leave the, the eye where you want to reader to go and see. And, and that also helps with my comics because it's this, multiplied by 10, 12 panels, and you had to compose them all. And if you master this, 
I'm not saying that you have to do picture books before comics, but it really helped helped me because I learned about books, I learned about the uh, type of paper, please. Of course, I learned that in university, but it's different when you are working with a publisher and you can learn that one of your small tips about that that uh, that kind of stuff. Of stuff. And also, uh, I was lucky because I had an editor that let me try things and let me learn on the job. You know, uh, before doing other other you know, other jobs. So, like, how long would a project like the 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 book you just showed us how long the writer who lost his words how long would that take you yeah how long did they give oh i think that? about three months from what i recall it's from 2010 i think somewhere around that i think that's what jeremy said he did his and th he did his in the summer and i think that that's really fast actually <laughs> for oh. most people i hear it takes but, a year uh, yeah it's in Portugal. It's very common to have small, tight, uh, tight deadlines to make a book. Uh, from our research, in the U.S. market, sometimes you have a year to do a book, uh, a thirty-two pages picture book. Uh, it doesn't happen here <laughs> very often. Uh, I only had that in comic book projects, uh, not in not in picture books. And after a while, I noticed that I picture books was not really my audience not my audience but not the best medium for my work or for what I like to do even though I did uh, a couple more uh, but I started working on comics and and uh, first in zines and small anthologies with friends mm -hmm. that also helped me because oh, I wasn't I was at the festival but I was in a signing session because of that two-page stories I did so I would I was with the other authors and I was uh, experimenting the signing session, which I, which I love because mm -hmm. when I sign a book, I do a small drawing for the, for the people. It's what I'm used to and, that, and that's what other authors did to me. So I try to you know, do the same because and I have a hard time writing. So it's much easier to do a small yeah. drawing that, you know, do a dedication by written, <laughs> written yeah. form. So, you know. Uh, so after that, I did uh, comic books, and I'm trying to find them out here. So it, but, it's, it yeah. seems like with comics, it's a little bit harder. There's a, a, a big, a lot of people who want to do it. Even with illustration, illustrating kids' books, there's a lot of people who want to do it. But you've mm -hmm. been able to kind of figure out a niche for you. One, like the thing with the Abbott sort of had connected to history the maybe the writer thing didn't really connect to something else that, but you've kind of like found this uh collaboration with doing things for history or science that are education wise and then you've been able to pitch some things as well so keep telling us the, ne the okay. next one i was just saying because it's it just seems like it's harder to do comics I oh mean, yes, it's much harder. <laughs> but it's much harder to get work as doing comedy uh, as well. Yes, um, I mean the 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 niche that I found was is not I did not found uh, many years ago. It's it's a recent thing because uh, luckily for me, the one of the owners of the comic book shop was also a scientist. I always loved science. I always loved history. My father is a history teacher. And and because of that, I had a lot of books in the in the house of you know history and and science and and of course that it, it's in, it's an influence for me and uh, they were there for me to read at my will. So uh, and I always enjoyed to know the history, how things are made, how our body works. So when I was invited to do this this book here, mm -hmm. um, oh, yeah, tell them what about what that one's about. Yeah, it's about stem cells, and uh, I have. Uh, you can read it uh, online for free in English. Uh, I can quickly post the link in the chat. Uh, I don't know how can I. Okay. You just have to change. And this, I was about to type this for somebody, but in the in the chat, oh, you need to change yeah, yeah. to all panelists and attendees. Uh, yeah, I, I posted the link there. Okay. So awesome. it's about it's about stem cells. So what did I know about stem cells when I got invited? Not I know <laughs> the name and somehow they got them from the umbilical cord. 
Mm. But now I can do a, pan, a talk about stem cells and not illustration because I learned so much with the project. And this yeah. was back in 2013 and I still remember what, I, what things are. So uh, it's a, a comic book, but it's another side. This is the grown up side or people who don't want to read comics. It's some, uh, a different kind of illustration, as oh, you can nice. see. But the, the comics have, um, have, have this, this look to it. Oh, yeah. And uh, just for curiosity, the first page was the last one to be drawn because I had no idea what to do <laughs> in that page. All I had was life is full of possibilities and options in every level. Just this sentence, no, this panel has this or that, you know, just, just that sentence. So I, I had... I had the opportunity to learn about stem cells and the and the different uh, body cells. Um, because when I was younger here in Portugal, there was a TV show, an animated show. I can't recall the English name, but it was Once Upon Life or something like that. A French animation of, uh, showing how you how the cells work, the blood cells work, and, and all that. Mm -hmm. um, and you can see me here in this panel. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's you. Um, and I had to, of course, some, in some panels, um, you, you, I had some maps that the scientist gave me, that John Romile gave me. Mm -hmm. um, this is showing uh, that one, with one cell from this uh, embryo, we can make all this. Uh, they produce all these organs. So the heart, the brain, the... I don't know what the liver. The liver, yeah. Um, Felipe says uh, loved that show. Yes. Uh, for example, this is the evolution of the uh, the embryo uh, growing up when he when she's born, when she's a little kid, and she is a, a woman, uh, an older woman. And I have small details. For example, the grass here is much brighter. And it starts fading out and getting oh, yeah. brown as the person is. Uh, small little things that uh, uh, I would add. But so um, this one was all done on paper in black, black and white India ink, yes. and then you would add the color in Photoshop. In Photoshop, yeah. Because after that uh, experiment with watercolor, I realized that uh, digital is much much better for. Uh, reviews and changing things and and now I do it I do the color always digital because there's also another issue that I don't have if I do the colors digitally it's to scan them watercolors are really hard to scan um, even to buy a, a good a3 scanner it's very expensive it's like four thousand dollars four thousand dollars or something ridiculous like that and because I, I work in black and white for the line work I, I have a multi-function scanner. It's really good for black and white uh, artwork, and that's all I need. Then I, I do the colors in the computer, and uh, yeah. And so my all my other books were done like that uh, in this way. All right, so I'm going back to number one okay. a little bit. So, <laughs> Sorry for no. taking a tour in. No, yeah. hey, that's what Design Recharge is all about. You've been here long enough, you know. Yes. <laughs> but at least we got some wi wicked questions answered. I right. think that's great. Some context. So then when, how old were you when you kind of fell in love with comics and you started drawing comics? Well, when I was, when I was younger, I was reading Asterix, which is a French uh, a series about uh, Romans and the invasion of nowadays France. Um, but when I really Think, thought about doing comics when I was a teenager. I discovered a French magazine called Lofus, which was like a, a publisher magazine. They would put small reviews of the books they were selling, and that was the magazine. But I was really influenced by that uh, humor and drawing uh, style. Mm -hmm. And uh, oh, in my seventh grade, I had a visit from a comic book author. She, he showed us the originals. His origins were like huge, 
he show us the all the CMYK prints that you uh, overlap in the printing. So, of course, when I went at that age, I I, I, I didn't even know what, how that worked. I just saw uh, yellow magenta printings of something, you know. But when I was a teenager, I discovered that magazine. I re I really thought, oh, I went to do comics. So when I was into the university, I was looking for a degree about comics, but there was no none. Right. Um, so I went to the closest thing. There was an university near my where I live, and that said illustration. Oh, illustration, do comics. So maybe I can, you know, sneak that into. Uh, and while I was finishing high school, we did a visit at the university because one of the teachers studied there. And I, I got to see the installations in the school. And then I, I decided to study there and for communication design. But my final project was a comic book. Um, I had to do final projects for graphic design and communication and multimedia. My multimedia project was a tutorial of skateboarding tricks. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> Which is also one of my uh, loves both drawing and skateboarding. And my final uh, project was uh, a comic book. Although during the degree, uh, in the first year I got to experiment, had uh, disciplines from all the courses like architecture, equipment design, uh, painting. Uh, I got to experiment uh, engraving with uh, copper and wood. Mm -hmm. Uh, develop films of photography, a lot of things, and that, that all that knowledge also is really nice. Yeah, you have that skills, especially as a designer, when you have to deal with photography and many other mediums. You know, if you have a, a small knowledge, you can add a little uh, spice that other other people might not, you know, might not have. So, did you learn any business skills like uh, pricing work or contracts or anything like that in school, or did you have to? Is that mm. all self-taught? No, no, no. What What really helped me was when I was for the first time I went to a festival in, in south of Portugal, Alentejo. I discovered other illustrators, other guys that made comics, and it's it's a really super relaxed uh, festival, and even the authors, the invited guests. Are always there they are always in that area so i got to be friends with a lot of one of the a lot of the best illustrators in portugal and then i would email them oh uh, i have this project here how much will i should i ask i'm thinking about this number what do you think about it and they would help me uh i would email two or three uh of, the, of those friends and they would give me an estimate and that helped me because i had no I but, no but again, so that skill of being able to ask, so asking for help, talking to people, yes. that these are two skills that a lot of people really have a hard time like getting over, even emailing to say, hey, how much? So, but again, it's relationship building, right? So you yes. probably had a relationship yes. with them before you started asking them for something. So if you have been buying comics from a comic book store, you mm. have a relationship with them. Yes. You know? Yes, so of course. How would how would an early conversation start? Like what how what when would you ask them to look at your book? Uh, probably after college, after university. Uh, well, during during the university, I would I would go to this the uh, Madora Bede, which is the the biggest festival here in Portugal, and I would I would see the the dates. I would see who was there. I if I had the book, I would take it. If not, I would buy it there. But not to ask about my portfolio, of course. I, I bought it because I enjoy it. But it's not. If I believe that you, if you do that that kind of thing, you buy the book and oh, sign me the book, and you don't say anything, people will know that you did that. And that's that's what I think. If someone doesn't tell you anything particularly about the book that you just purchased, they don't know, or, or they don't know what what is it, what's in there. So. I believe that works if you really enjoy the work and you can have a, a, a conversation about the story, about the anything, you know. Of course, I, I also ask people I did not read the book, but uh, not in that situation, not in the autographs. So uh, one of the other 
things was when, and I think you're talking about like these festivals, it's kind of like a mm -hmm. conference for us where a bunch of uh, people come or, or um, maybe it's like a Comic Con, a convention kind of. Y'all have Comic Cons, right? Not, yes, now, now we have uh, Comic Con Portugal, yeah, about five years ago, I think. But I, I also went to design festivals. There was a off, off O and three Fs, I believe. They had uh, Stefan Sagmaster and Paul Scher and uh, Robert L. Peters from the Canada Association of Designers. Uh, but uh, oh, in that situation, I was doing other, other things. Uh, I was drawing the, the guests and then I would show them the drawings. That's why I would introduce myself. Oh, I did this drawing yes. of, the, of your talk with the bullet points and uh, not bullet points, I would do... Like sketch noting. Yeah, sketch noting, yeah. Yeah. That's how I would introduce myself. But I believe that discovering the comic book uh, community, I found people that enjoy what I did, what I also like. They enjoy drawings. They would geek out about pens and paper. Uh, and, and you also, I believe you will be much more comfortable. Sometimes it's just uh, in school, I, I did not have that. Uh, but after university and going to these festivals, I found out my tribes that, you know, both in skateboarding and in comics. And because for my experience, skateboarding is, is a community that's very supportive. If you are st starting to learn, they will help you. They'll give you tips. And... I found that the same in the in the comics uh, in Portugal. They are much more receptive to say what pen they use. That in, for example, the children's books uh, community, mm -hmm. uh, and to share. Oh, I use Photoshop and Photoshop it. Oh my God, I did not know. Because there are people they are afraid to say that use a what pen do you use? Like like using that pen would make them draw like me. You know, it's not that. <laughs> You know, it's. I can get like all that. the pins in the yeah, world, Andre. I'm not going to. Yeah. <laughs> Carly said oh, the same yeah. thing. I'm thinking, give me that pin then. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So, Paige had a question. She said, Are you still reading comics these days? And what are you reading? What I'm reading now? Um, uh, comic wise. Yeah, comic wise. I'm. Comic I'm reading a series called Rumble about. It's written by John Arcudi and James Heron. I'm following that uh, that series. It's published by Image Comics. And uh, I haven't read as much because I'm drawing a book and you know, that takes a lot of time. Right. Uh, I don't read as much as I used to. Uh, and I'm trying to finish Watchmen, which is a big famous book that everyone's told me, you must read this. It's amazing. I, I don't find that to be like that, maybe off all the hype that, you know. Right. But, and I also, uh, uh, I went to Angoulême and I bought uh, a comic about dinosaurs, which is pretty great. And about uh, a guy that worked with the invest investigators of science. And he did a couple, two pages stories about that and I'm reading that. So I'm, I'm also trying to read more books related to my, what I want to work in because I can so I can see what how they do it and how it's done. No research. I yeah, guess. you can claim it on your taxes. Yeah. All right. So um, Matt has a question. He said, "I love your work." Here's the question: oh, Write, Writing is such a huge part of making successful comic creations. Mm -hmm. How much of a process was it to learn how to write, and how much of the overall project is writing? Well. I write with images, not with words. So I'm working on my writing muscle. It's still very weak. Uh, I only did a couple short stories, five pages uh, was the longest. I want. I wanted to do uh, more of that, also because I, I. So I can do it all, you know, control the story and the image. But I do enjoy collaborating because. For myself, I would not draw stem cells or tales of the abbot. I, I like that because it broadens your horizons. You, you can maybe you can find out something that you love, you know, and you haven't you you, you did not know about it. But uh, 
but with some of the works and doing more comics, I can now I can pick a, a text that is not written in the format for comics, like a script, and I can put it in a comic book because I have the experience of 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 doing that. Um, uh, but writing is not. For now, I'm concentrating on illustrating. Uh, so and maybe oh, when I can, I try to improve. So maybe illustrating somebody else's writing. Yes, that's what I've been doing. All all these projects I I showed you, they were um, somebody. They else. were like that. I was creating the books with other person. Yeah, which is which is how you are able to make money, you know, and and pay yeah. your bills and pay yes. for dog food and things like that. Okay, yes. so. So before we go too far, since you're talking about pins, I know you've tried lots, but you love brushes you, yes. and India ink. And that was India something you ink, found. Yeah. So what can you yeah. get your stuff? Because I know that's on that shelf right behind you. Yes, I, I keep it up there, all my, yeah. you know. And that, that, that trying off the dog is one of, it's what, from my first illustrated book. But um, yeah, it's not. It's not a good. <laughs> it's not a good portfolio. Uh, I have this pen, this uh, brush. Sorry, I don't know if it will appear there. Yeah. Uh, it's from Winsor and Newton. It's called. It's from a Series Seven. It's sable brush. They are super pointy. That's what I like in brown brushes. They are super pointy, and uh, oh, one thing I also like is you don't make uh, any pressure. Like for example, in a tablet or Cintiq or Intos or whatever, you have to press with harder to get the line thicker or more less opaque. But with the brush, you are all almost like hovering in the paper and you just like do this. And it's a very good thing to, to, to experience while drawing. Uh, I also use sometimes uh, uh, pen nibs, mm -hmm. but I don't, I don't enjoy it as much is mostly for uh, some details that I don't uh, can really do with brushes because they get into the paper and then they do splatters and I can control when that when that happens and I like to be able to control my line work so with the brush yeah I can control how much ink is there or less how, how dry it is um, because I, I can also use this, which is uh, inking, it's called inking stone. I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, it's, we can see it, yeah. No, it has a... a it's a, like a swimming pool. Yeah, it's... Where it has a deep end, right? Yeah, it has a deep end, yeah. So in the deep end, I know the, the ink is more fluid and more uh, liquid. And when it's here, I know it's, it's a bit drier. So mm -hmm. when I want a dry brush effect, I, I, clean, the, I clean the brush with water. I wipe it out and I use the dryer ink. Um, I also have brush pens. Mm -hmm. This is from Pentel. Mm -hmm. I have some of those. The, yeah, this is the Pentel color brush. And what I did in this in this uh, pen, I took out the the cartridge, and I filled all this body with with ink. So why do I do that? It's because it's cheaper. To use yeah. to buy a big, to buy a, a large bottle of ink, and to fill it out when I when I want to. So I want you. Do you have some of those drawings on your table back there? You could show us. Yes. Because one I of have. the things is that you he works in such detail, and so I'm going to share this real quick while you get those. Okay. I want them to see. Um, okay, so this I'm going to show this one. Oh, okay. So how tiny that is and how big his finger is. So yeah. he's not working. Um, and so there looks like there's like, uh, am I just seeing through the paper or is... No, no, no. It's this. Pencil? It's a black and white photo, but what you see in the, in the less opaque, it's the printing in blue. Oh. So now I don't draw with graphite. Only if I have to correct things. I, I draw on Photoshop. I... Print it out in uh, light blue, like sixteen percent percentage. Mm -hmm. so it, I can see what it's there, but I don't see it very clearly because I don't like. For me, I don't like to draw something like draw, drawing in, in pencil the thickness of the line because the brush will do that for me. 
Mm -hmm. I, I don't like to, to draw the same things twice. So each so, stage, the thumbnail, the pencils and the ink, I can add something new. So uh, is this done next. digitally? The sketch? The sketch is digital, yeah. Okay. The sketch is I, digital. I can, okay, you will touch. understand it better when I show the... But this. I got to show one more thing. Okay. Okay, so, so the other day, um, Andre was like, yeah, I got some... Um, I just saw this real small at yeah. first and i thought oh my gosh he can carve wood and he <laughs> there's some of uh, dustin's brushes who's a good right. friend he's been on the show lots of times and so he was like oh my goodness and then i suzanne works for dustin and i was like i tagged her and i was like oh my gosh i can't believe this and suzanne i think she commented it well she was uh, like, yes i think so yeah what? And it was her mind was blown. But it is so, you know, it's not that you can't do it digitally. You do practice. You do right. play with yes. it. But it is, you know, you're able to do, you enjoy the process more. But there's so many tiny details. And this is, I one time watched the Instagram live with um, Andre. And it was like, I mean, I, it was like you and Jason Carn need to be best friends because you would like have, <laughs> The tiniest little pads of paper, I guess, and you would just have these full stories. But but it is so detailed and they're just such small, but they're amazing. And that's where I yes. you, know, you really can't get that sometimes in those picture books, the the kids' books. No, no, but right. And one of the advantages of brush for me is that you can go as thin as I don't know, one point two five pen. Or you have a, a very large uh, mark on the page, so I don't need to switch tools to do that. I, I use only one thing, and it's the brush. Uh, it works for me, and I sometimes I can uh, draw um, lines, uh, straight lines with a hand because uh, you know with the years I I'm able to do that. Um, but let me show you here the what, what I was talking about. So you can see it's the a blue line yeah. that I do. In this case, it's from for another book, a book that you uh, all all the pages that you share were from that book. It's a book about Lole, which is the scientist science. I have another question. Okay. All right. So Matt has a question about paper, but I have a question. And okay. I have to. So do you work full size, or are you working bigger than what you're going to need it at? Well, I always, I always draw in this format, uh -huh. uh, A3, even if, okay. it, even if it's a small book. Uh, some of the picture books I did, I did it in A4, which is half of the paper. Are but you because, using both sides of the paper? No, it's a double, it's a double oh. scratch. Okay. Oh, oh, I see. Oh, that's how big the paper is? No, it's, it's two, two sheets oh. of paper glued oh, okay. with the... Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sure. <laughs> uh, like, so it's, big the, it's the biggest I draw because it's the scanner I have. So before I would draw in before because it was the scanner I I had. And I I I tried to scan in A4, but I, I was scanning twice and it drove me nuts because sometimes the photo merge uh, doesn't work, they didn't align and I was losing my mind. So I uh, I I purchased a, a A3 scanner and it's so much better. No, so then, no aligning things anymore. I know exactly what you're talking about. So yeah. what if Matt asked about paper? He said, okay. um, "Real brushes make such delicious lines." He also is a oh, yeah, yeah. brush guy. So, yes. what kind of paper do you use? Uh, right now, I use two brand, two two series of Canson, which is a French uh, brand. It's one of those is French Imagine series because it has uh, 50 sheets of paper for about eight or 10 euros. So how for the amount is, of paper, how sorry? How far is France from where you live? Uh, it's a long far. way? Yeah, three hours flight or two hours and a half flight, depending when you when No, no, not driving. I know, but what about driving? Do you know how long it would take you driving? Because I don't fly places. Well, uh, I mean, if I had to drive yeah, for an LM, which is a, a big festival, maybe almost two days or okay. one day and something. Okay. I, I haven't just tried that because it's in the winter and I, I heard some stories about how cold it was and I 
Yeah, you don't want to drive through that. I don't want to drive. <laughs> okay, so show us some more of your so and and I I want you to hold up like that one that you had. I just want you to oh. come really close okay. to the camera. And this is one we used on a promo. So again, this yeah, is yeah. kind of sciencey yeah. cuz yes. you're talking and and it's education wise. So again, you're you're meeting these people at these at these um, festivals, at these conventions or conferences. Well, uh, in this, I like I have a, a, a detailed process of this book. If if you want me to share, uh, but in this case, the this book that you use in the promo, mm -hmm. um, we have a, an English version. Yeah, English version, right? Uh, how this work how this book happened was. Uh, Lola is in the south of Portugal and uh, a very successful comic book artist lived there, lives there, but he, he doesn't work anymore in comics. Um, so he referred the shop owners that I was talking about earlier. So one of them, I, I already illustrated a book for him, which is the stem, stem, uh, stem cell book. Mm -hmm. And they invited me to the project uh, to do this book. And it's, it tells the story from the Big Bang until nowadays. So it's a very um, big timeline to, to tell. So, How many pages is that one? I believe it's 72 pages long. So how long did that take you? And that seems like more uh, of a, that's like more of a comic, right? Like a, or yeah. a, a graphic novel? It's more a graphic novel, yeah, it's a big book. Um, it took almost two years to make, wow. uh, so it's a very. It was a very long process. I was really exhausted at the end, uh, so much that I I I spent about a month that a month that I I did not wanted to draw, did not want to illustrate anymore. I was really burned out of stress that I that it took to to do the book. Um, so I never had I never drawn sci-fi stuff before so this is uh, me uh, making stuff out because uh, but I can share a tip for you <laughs> to draw uh, machines is that they, they don't have to make sense you can make a bunch of cables and it will seem high tech <laughs> <laughs> well because a lot of the stuff you draw or have drawn is more like um, yeah, it's more I've nature, seen, animals, and organic stuff. And people. And I've seen, people. like, or, or from history, they're like the... Um, Let me see. The, yeah. This ship was... This would not make any sense <laughs> because the, the propellers are where the ships enter. In. But it, I think that people don't think about that stuff. It's an image, and you see the tech, you see the ship, you see the designs, and since it's a double spread, I had to add enough details that the people could spend a lot of time discovering things and little details because in comics the bigger the the image or the panel is the longer the time so it, it, that's how time works in comics if you have a very short panel like this mm -hmm. in 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 width if it, it has a very short panel uh, it's a small it's a short uh, time thing so it, the bigger the, it is the longer it oh. should be, or in some cases, if it has more text, uh, it needs to be larger. Okay, so I have uh, another question yeah. about scale, and then Matt has a question too. All right, okay. so so say that big one with the um, the ship's bay and the things. So if that's on your A3. Yes, I have the original right here. So. Okay, great, because then this is what I'm asking about scale. Oh, so you're working huge. Like each panel is a, oh, is a spread? No, each panel was two pages. Yes, two pages. Holy cazoli. Yes, and when I was drawing this, I had two more A3 pages because of the, I'm not recalling the name, for the perspective point. Uh, where oh, the, where yeah, yeah. Because uh, before this page, before, uh, yeah, in this, in this page, the early pages, I was drawing all by graphite. So oh, it wow. Uh, it was not it was a lot of time consuming you know and 
says I like to suffer, you know, the, all the points you see here are like the brush, uh, like tick, 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 tick. Is tick, it tick, white tick. ink or your? No, no, it's, you, I'm adding black ink. In here. That's what I got. I, I, have, I have a video, a, a clip wow. that I, I added to Instagram. So each, each one of these things is a dot. But speaking of materials, you can use this. It's a white paper okay. to clean. Like uh, a napkin? The napkin, yes, sorry. Uh, translation is just... <laughs> <laughs> okay. uh, you can do this. You can dip it in. Oh, yeah. You can, you can for example, all these textures were with this. Uh, sometimes oh, nice. it's, it's a very fun material to work because you can use uh, your hands, your fingerprints, uh, paper uh, to add uh, subject uh, textures. Mm -hmm. uh, an Italian or Argentine uh, author used a razor blade to draw the uh, the lines, which is even more crazy. Wow! Uh, yeah. So, so this is the. So Matt had a question, and so this was about three days. Uh, okay, so three. So then he asked, "How many hours do you spend drawing in your free time? Like today, you worked a full day. I think it's like six p.m. now, right?" Uh. 7 30. about 8 p.m. 8 okay and well then... I have a hard time drawing for fun now uh, but that doesn't really mm, bothers me too much uh, at least now because you know it's, it's I do what I love so I can really I can't really complain about it how uh, many projects but... do you work on at a time uh, if it's a, if it's a long rook, I can only do that project really, uh, unless it's like a short story. It, when I was doing this book, I did a couple, a two-page uh, story for a newspaper, which was I, what I have here, uh, also in science. But it, I can do much because in in comics, especially in, with this complexity, if I miss a day. I try to do a page a day, more or less, depending on the page. For, in this book, I have a, a page here that has only one face. Then, then it's a scan document, so that page did not you know, take me that long. Right. But in, in contrast, these ships took me almost three days to finish. So you know, it, it depends on the page, depends on the complexity. But you kind of plan it out, like you get a calendar and you kind of figure out, do you do a little sketch first and then you... And then you start working out which you're going to do on what days? Yeah. Ideally, I would have the text all complete. Then I do thumbnails, which can take about two weeks, so depending on the pages, uh, numbers. Uh, uh, then I do the inks. I, I try to do it in that order. Uh, thumbnails, pencils, and inks. And I have a whiteboard in my right side. Where I have the list of pages and I see the progress and I take great pleasure in putting another cross <laughs> on each, uh, another page done, another cross I, I, yeah. I can do. Um, but yeah, this, this takes a long time. Do you There's skateboard a, in your free time? Well, I try to, but uh, I have to be careful with my hands because it's easy to fall and, you know, um, so uh, many times I, I play skateboarding games. I, I get my dose of skateboarding because I, I really can't. Or it's because it's bad weather or it's, I have a deadline. Or it's not as easy as... No. Right. Well, that's good. At least you're protecting your, your hands. Yes, yes. <laughs> because uh, when I was doing a, a, an earlier book that I can also show you, which is this one. Oh, yeah. Uh, I did not... I didn't do a lot of breaks between, so I'd stay four or five hours inking nonstop. And then I, my hands start to hurt and I had to do, you know, physical, physical therapy. therapy. Mm -hmm. It's not a fun thing. So for a long time I had a, a nap, which this, this may seem silly, but hey, it works for me. Uh, and a timer and I put one hour work and it, it, it appears and there's there's a, a someone doing oh do these stretches do this exercise so i'm so focused on these things when i when i was thinking that spread with the with the 
with the with the inks i was totally focused i could not do anything else uh you know i was just in a, in that total zone i could not do anything it right. was uh, really crazy so i used that because i i have to i have to have something to remind me to take a break because it's really easy for me to focus and stay in the zone and they not know i don't notice the time passing you know right so all right so what's been the hardest thing question two after an hour <laughs> i get to question two i just think oh, it's funny. My gosh. um we've <laughs> covered others so that's good but what's been the hardest thing about working for yourself uh um the business side really it's 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 my weakest point at this time at this point um the yards i feel i have a a nice uh level um but the business the marketing especially online it's it's what i struggle the most for example i i do very well either meeting people or selling my work in person Selling online and online uh, marketing is another beast. For example, my Instagram lives are very spontaneous. I just realize I will do a, a live stream now. And right. ink with my phone in my hand and it's usually late in Portugal. But, you know, uh, I, don't, I don't have that Instagram skill yet to really market well, and, you know. Uh, but in person it works. It works good uh, in events and you know, meeting people. Yeah, because you can read their body language and you can see if they're interested. And if they're not yeah. interested, you just walk away, right? I mean, not like yes. walk away, but you no, close no, no. The conversation. Oh, I don't do. Oh, what the hell? <laughs> no, I don't do that. <laughs> but yeah, first because I think it's just a question. Either the person will say yes or no. We're asking about the portfolio reviews, you know. What what what's the worst that can that can happen? He's he's gonna say no, and you okay, you move on to the next one. Especially in these big events, uh, in comic book events like the one I was in January. It's the biggest festival in Europe. It's almost eight hundred publishers there. It's completely insane. So you need to take your time really good. And if it's not working, you should go. And you know, uh, and yeah, when they are. Re, uh, watching my portfolio, I can see how their reactions. Of course, they could be very good at, you know, trying to hide <laughs> that, but right. um, it, it's in your face, you know, you, you are watching what the people, what the person is doing, uh, if he does, or or something like that, you know, it's in an in, in email form, you don't know the emotion that is right, being uh, conveyed. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so, um, oh, gosh. Uh, um, uh, I'm sorry, we're like, I have a meeting at three and this is okay. the person who's coming. It's okay. Um, I'll call her back in just a second. Okay, so we're, we're going to have to do a part two, Andre. I mean, okay. we're all this, <laughs> so we're going to have to do a part two. But I, I just um, am so thankful that you were willing to come on and share, but I want you to end. I want you to tell them about the project of the city. So again, you're, it's, I think finding your niche has kept you in work because yes. you, people know you for that thing. They know you that you can do science or that you can do space or that you can do history. And so it's like you have these two things which are education based and now yes. people know to come to you for that because sometimes we have these really broad, I can do this, I can do this. And I know Matt Wood's amazing illustrator and he can do lots of different styles. Right. But maybe it's not that he needs to change. He still can do lots of different styles, but maybe it's niching down on a subject and right. then a subject that has legs because people are teaching science. People are teaching history. So tell them about your project. It wasn't your city, but it was a city in Portugal. Uh, yes, maybe I can try. I don't know how, how long do I have uh, like left? 15 minutes, 15 minutes. Okay. How do I uh, share the, the hover over my face and you see it has to be open on your screen already okay. and then if you hover over my face there's this green square or rectangle at the bottom and it says share right 
and then you click that and then you have to click into another thing and okay i think awesome, it's you guys uh yeah we see it, yeah it's a powerpoint presentation that's what you are seeing right yes mm -hmm. okay so this is the the cover Can you blow it up the, a little bit yeah. bigger sorry it's okay Oh, oh, that's even better. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's way better. Uh, this is the the cover. Mm -hmm. You can see here the the I don't know how to say it in English. The the city logo. Let's call it that. And uh, in in the cover, you see the that's the sci-fi environment. But this is really a, a a way to tell kids about story and science, but in a more fun way without being very schooly didactic the usual comics that they do here in portugal are very uh, different did you get to design this one also like do all the type and everything oh, yes yes i did sorry i had to speed some things those these are the characters mm -hmm. um and this is the a team of we call it verifiers they go to the earth many centuries after our century to see how the earth is because it's frozen in in, in snow in ice and this is the captain. This is the the says Darwin is the biologist. Anessa is the archaeologist, and Jose is a illustrator or drawing. Okay. And the guy in green is the guy they are, they are going to unfrozen the in the uh, salt mine. Okay. So this is the page you have seen before the the mm -hmm. ships. And this is the Big Bang uh, spread. So I'm. Showing you how the universe uh, uh, Big Bang uh, could could have been, uh, and you can see that uh, what comes out of the explosion does the panels. So each each uh, in the bottom each each I'm trying to think about the English word. I know you're doing great. Each com comet, let's call it that, uh, makes a division. So you can see the gal galaxies forming, the planets forming, and, and the Earth. So each, it, it was a way of me having a comic book page, but more uh, in a different uh, composition. And here we have life. So you can see the circle panels. I did that because it goes. It, it's the silhouette of Earth. So it's what's happening on Earth, and also what you see when you are looking at the microscope because these are cells they are tiny tiny uh, uh, beings and on the left on the right side there's the photos photosynthesis and the green you know the ozone layer and all that that's the spread i showed you before the with the fauna and flora of course neither of these animals will coexist like this you know uh, uh, the the bird on the left bottom is only appears at night and things like that but i had to create an image that you know have all these uh, plants and animals i have another question what about sure. the bende dots like those did you use like a i know retro supply has but lots of people have the oh, kind right of the elf tones yeah uh, they are from kyle wester uh, okay yeah i like uh, kyle too but so but this is done in the computer it's digital yes, you're not i did i i did that also because of one particular reason because this book is very complex it's a lot of things to paint um so the half tones save me time uh, why why do they save me time because i used black dots for sh uh, for shadow and white dots for light so i i put them in overlay or something like that and also, they gave they gave the book a different look. You don't see this very often in coloring books, uh, in picture books, or uh, something like that. Gives a, a different aesthetic. Mm -hmm. Actually, my girlfriend painted the flat colors for me, which was a huge help. And all, all some colors I change it after others I I let them let the ones she had picked. Um, and the colors are in the process of doing comics. Is my least favorite uh, mm. to do because it's i have a hard hard time picking color so i use the system of what message do i want to have it there how can i work this out so for example the, the costumes are orange which is a complementary color to that blue background and when when i showing the salt mine it's this blue when i want to isolate the character it has this bright yellow um, which differentiates the you can read it the colors very quickly so 
I had to think about the system that allowed me to color the book, you know, in a easier way. This, for example, uh, uh, the borders are the tiles, Roman tiles that were discovered in Vole, which is the city that, that the, book talk, the book talks about, and we framed it in that, in that uh, thing. This is another part of the book. It's, it's called uh, about a tale of Kasima, which is a Muslim legend tale. Uh, so it has a different drawing style, which was hard for me because, okay, I will do a, a simpler style. Uh, well, no, I have, still have to do some details just to be happy with that, with adding some textures. And this is all digital. There's no... Oh, wow. Uh, in, that's, mm -hmm. that's why in that page that I showed you uh, earlier, the, mm -hmm. the, with the blue printings, uh, that's this part. I don't know if you will see it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, and for example, this is the uh, stones that have a, a, an alphabet that hasn't been deciphered until now. We don't know what they are saying because it's a mis mixture of different uh, cultures. Right. So we have the cardinal, uh, I don't know how to say it. It's like a crest. English. You mean the Mardi Gras, the, Mardi Gras oh. or something like that? Carnival. No, oh, yeah, yeah, Mardi Gras. Carnival, we know side. what that yeah. is. Yeah. Um, so, for example, it's another rubble spread with the tsunami. It was, there was an earthquake in Lisbon. And it was so strong that it came out to the south of Portugal. And that monument is the only thing left from that time. And in the yellow panel is a description of what happened in that day. Wow. Yeah. Yikes. So I don't know if it was this dramatic, but in, for the story, it needs to be. So the, the reason I put it in the uh, red background to reinforce the emotion. It's a dramatic thing. It's, it's not a happy red. It's a dark red. So the colors are picked to also convey the emotion uh, that I want to in that, in, that, in that spread. So these are a couple influences that I used to the design. This is a, from a book called uh, Wake from Sean Gordon Murphy. It's just, this is from Southern Cross. So for the ships and things like that. Um, this is in a French book called uh, uh, Valerian. Mm. So during this time, the writer was showing me image uh, books, different books with different solutions for the storytelling. You can see the gun panel at the top that is divided in four. Sometimes you can do that kind of uh, things with the, and I did not know this and it helped me to have more creative ideas for the layouts without being a series of rectangles, for example. Right. It really, it really helped me. Because he's, he's a crit, uh, writes critics for comments, he helps uh, ed editions called Drone Miguel Amaira. And he has a lot of books and he, he knows a lot of comics and he, he, he also helped me you know, to, with this. We have what a couple um, a couple of homage for oh, a couple oh. of books. It's from Tintin. Uh, we did that image at the bottom. And just for curiosity, my father painted that flat colors without ever touching Photoshop. <laughs> Where to go, Dad? Yeah, where to go, Dad? <laughs> um, and this was a gentleman called Gerald Gelino, which was a big uh, supporter of zines and comics in general. He had a blog that he uh, published. So we, we did a small homage in the comic. He tells the story of Kasima, the, the legend I was telling you about. Mm. Um, so a bit of process, quickly. This was the first sketches of the characters um, do it, done in, in pencil. Do you get those approved? And then yes, I, I show it to the writers uh, okay. so they can see what is going on. Uh, then I, I, I started thinking, oh, I should draw it in ink because that's the final form, not pencil. So I did a couple studies in, in ink and brush of all the characters. Then yeah. I, I that one guy looks mean in that one. <laughs> uh, I, for example, the archivist that there was the guy in green. Here was a much younger version. They said, "Oh, it needs to be older." Mm -hmm. They gave me a, a lot of freedom in the character design because mostly it was the age, uh, hair, uh, eye color, and things like that. And the lady is the captain of the ship. She's a commander in, in charge, and she has that scarf because it's the muslim yeah uh, the hijab or the yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. i probably didn't so say it right. i do i did these things with a adobe fuse which uh which is a very cool 
app to use because it, you can choose the uh, face, uh, torso, and members, the arms and legs, and you can modify a little bit. Why did I do this? Because I had I wanted to to help something to help me to keep the proportion. Mm. Um, so this I did is it. Pretty easy to do, or is because yeah, you had that multi? No, it's, it's super easy. No, it's super easy. You, you choose the type of, of head type. Uh, if you want the nose longer, or broader, you can slide. You have slides to choose that, and they have a library of hairs, for and, example. And uh, Paige is asking, "This is Adobe Fuse." Yes, Adobe Fuse. Yes. Okay. And then you can export this into Photoshop, and you can uh, turn it like a three D computer app, and you can pick the type of lighting and where the light is. Wow. So you really can, you really can make you easier and you can search for animation like people running and all, and this, uh, this, uh, character gets a pose in running. So wow. It, that's it cool. Helps that me, helps you me a lot. Yeah. Yeah. So this is the, the girl, the archeologist. And this is the hijab that the program did not have, but I chose the object that was closer, that had the... More of her face similar, cover. Uh, yeah, the, the, that covered the face in a similar style. So sometimes you have to use... Uh, improvise. Uh, yeah, improvise. Yeah, we have, that's uh, awesome. We have a Portuguese, a good Portuguese word that is called zenrasca, which is, uh, yeah, it's, it's that type of thing. Uh, so in the book, we have uh, two pages that explain the process. So you can see the text on the left side the thumbnail mm -hmm. the right below and on the on the right side it's a zoom versions of what happens so the pencils the inks the flat colors and the all the effects soft tones and shadows and all that um so this is the the shape the spaceship image in pencil mm. so you can see there's there is not a lot of but you changed uh, it's not 027 yeah. Right, you changed it and have it like hieroglyphics on the final. Oh yeah, yeah. Because uh, since the hieroglyphs had to be reviewed by a specialist, um, I did that digitally, so it it was easier for me. Yeah. To to change it, um, so you can as, but you can see that there is no stars, there is no black. I have it white, so I can decide, you know, what works better, and I. When I ink it, I go with the flow and, you know, try to take it here or put more there, you know. Mm -hmm. That looks awesome. Yeah. So this is the black and white image. And this is a, an example. I had a notebook just for the project where I tried out the thumbnails and solutions and different designs for the, for the things. Uh, three, ch three chances for the Big Bang's explosion. Hmm. Because I was listening to a documentary called Cosmos, and I was a guy was telling though if the universe is spreading out, so that means at one time everything was together, mm. you know. So I thought about the explosion, and then it was a matter of me deciding how I would want the explosion from the top, from the side, on the center. The center was bad because it was the middle of the book, you know. Mm. So I, I decided to the uh, version on the top, and then I quick I had this very rough. Uh, layouts for me to figure out all the book um, uh, the spreads yeah it's very very rough uh, uh, layouts yeah but that's what we have to do yeah and some designs for the ships uh, and uh, you can see and on the right side below above the small head uh, you, you there's a plan uh, like an architecture plan of the ship because mm -hmm. I had to draw the characters walking this character walking from the big circle to the other and I had to think how this could work because I like to draw things that you, you that could work out in reality so and they have to make sense they have to be consistent if the character is walking on our direction if she, if she was in the room he maybe have to see some of that room so our, so we can understand she's walking from there you know and I needed to have that planned and a plan that I could see and, and, and think, oh, okay, I have to draw this little thing and that little thing. So that makes sense. Makes sense. So many the, details and just even your memory, using your memory to make sure that these right. are consistent. Yeah, I think right. that that's because what so I good. was listening to a documentary about Frank Whiteley. And he, and he says an interesting thing that 
the illustrator in comics have to uh, do the things so that the reader doesn't have to think too much. Too much in, in this sense, uh, that is in the same room, that all details right. match, you know. Um, so there's a couple more uh, layouts of that. I was trying to see what I, how it could work, that, that transition. Mm -hmm. and, uh, sm uh, spaceships. The spaceship is in, in the, there's a big church in Lola called Mardas Mãe Soberana. So uh, I don't know how to really translate it, but it's, it's almost like a UFO uh, silhouette. It's a very modern uh, church on the, mm -hmm. on the exterior. So I use that, that part of that oh, silhouette. Cool. So this is our the sketches for the cover, um, and these are the things that I was sharing in Instagram along this very long project. You know, and some of the tools, and you can see the scale uh, of the characters with the brush and the pen nib. Tiny. Uh, yeah, uh, and wow, a couple more uh, photos. You can see the light blue. The prints over there. Oh, uh, I forgot to say one thing. I I started printing in blue because I bought a pad that was not cut right. I was uh, measuring two centimeters from each side, and that doesn't give me a, a straight line. And I was thinking, uh, I don't know how to connect two dots. What I'm, what is what is happening? So I discovered that the paper was. Uh, oh, it wasn't I, straight. I, I had to find out the solution. So after. A bunch of stress with <laughs> uh, measuring the, the sheets. If this was only one or every one that I had, um, I I inked without borders, so I did uh, the borders in InDesign. Mm. So I did not have to worry about that and throw away I don't know how many yeah sets of paper. Uh, that's the main reason. And after that, I discovered how easy it is for for my mind because if I made something wrong, or if I don't like a panel. Or the page, I just print it out again, and I don't have to draw all over. I don't have to erase, which is amazing. You know, imagine erasing seventy-two pages. That's a long time <laughs> doing that. When I scan the image, the blue disappears. I don't have to even go to levels or something. It's the right percentage for it to go away. Wow. Um, so I do all these things because it's a lot of pages, it's a lot of time. So everything that I can use to you know, speed things up. I, I use it. Uh, Andre, I'm going to have to let you go. Sure. Um, because we're at I'm our time, time and I got to yeah. go to the bathroom. <laughs> 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 All right. Um, can you take us off screen here? Or can you flip sure. through the rest of them really fast? Sure. The, that, this is, was just a, a couple of video yeah. of me inking. So just you can see the dots, how I did them. No. And there is on the page, so if you go to recharging you slash 308, you can see there's a, a clip and it starts at uh, frame 21 or 21 minutes, I think, right? Uh, sorry, I was trying to see if this... So am, the, am I still sharing? I, I don't know. No, nope, you're good. It's just your face. Oh, okay. But um, anyway, there's a there's a link of when you were interviewed, um, and there's it's like oh, at yeah. 21 minutes, I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah? It's an eight minute video um, okay. of of a Portuguese channel went to my studio, and for two hours they recorded me uh, drawing uh, an illustration, and that link is in the show notes. Yep. Uh, it's already there. So if you guys want to watch right. it, but I want to make sure everybody knows how they can follow you. So I'm going to give your information. So if you guys are listening, I haven't, I haven't gone crazy. This is a, it's just a really incredible interview and we'll have to do a part two. Part twos live at Patreon. You can go to patreon.com and get those uh, slash patreon.com slash Diane Gibbs, D-I-A-N-E-G-I-B-B-S. All right, and then um, I'll do the rest of the commercials after. So you can follow Andre at A-N-D-R-E-C-A-E-T-A-N-O. That's one. That's his dot com. Yeah. Um, you can, oh. and that he is taking clients because I think that's incredible. And then you can also, <laughs> uh, so... Andre Caetano illustrate underscore illustrations is the Instagram. Instagram yeah. And then there's, um, there's some illustrations that you did for the TV show 
And uh, I'm going to just put your, I already put your Instagram on there once, but I hear my people outside, so I got to go. But I, I will send you the link for the stem cell comic. So you, if you can add it to. Yeah, absolutely. And then if there's a way like that um, for us, if we wanted to buy a book, I think that you said that there was, you could sit, give us a link for that too. Right. Oh, you just send me an email. I don't have an online shop yet. If you okay. send me an email, I will. I will. We can talk Do you about want that. To tell them what your email is. Oh yeah, sure. It's hello at andrekaitan.com. Okay. All right. Hey, it was awesome. I'm always glad to see you and hang out with you. Thank you for being you and just being so willing to share. And and he's built a illustration community in Portugal, and he's just the part two is going to be great, people. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. Uh, Hi, y'all. Patreon.com slash Diane Gibbs, Elementor, capital bit.ly, B-I-T dot L-Y slash capital D, capital R, Elementor, and then Timely, the bit.ly, B-I-T dot L-Y slash D-R, Timely, all lowercase. I hope you guys check it out, and I'll see you next week. I didn't even mess up once. I have my door open.